Hey, it's Kirk from Worship Start. Welcome to the walkthrough of our synth bass kit for Main Stage 3 and Logic Pro X. This template is an awesome polyphonic synth that's super versatile and it's dialed in for some incredible synth bass tones. It drew its inspiration from some awesome synths such as DSi's Pro 1, Moog Sub 37, and our very own DSi Prophet 08. So throughout this template, you're gonna see a lot of similar parameters and sound design controls that you might see on these hardware-based synths. But the main difference is that this is all done using Main Stage 3, everything is plug and play, and everything is optimized and ready to go for you. So we've tried to make this as realistic as possible, and honestly, it's super fun to use and to play around with. So let's jump in, and I'll try my best to explain how to use each individual feature. So let's start with the patches. This template comes with 20 patches in total, with 15 of them being individual synth based tones, and the other five are arpeggiated synth based patches. And a lot of these patches are really different and they cover a lot of the stereotypical synth based sounds that you might expect in different genres. So we have some warm and clean synth based tones, we have sub bass, we even have some EDM inspired square wave basses, and lots more. And our arpeggiated bass patches give you that retro sound and they're super fun to play around with. So I'm not gonna show you them now, but if you want a full listen through all the patches, definitely check out our demo video that is on our website. All right, so we're gonna go back to perform mode here and jump into the interface. So let's take a look at the middle section here. And this is the oscillator section. And this is the meat and potatoes of the template because this is where your sound is generated. And we actually have two multi-waveform oscillators here that give you a lot of different sound design capabilities. If we take a look at oscillator one, we have a sine wave, triangle wave, uh, sawtooth wave, square wave, and we also have a pulse wave, which we can use this knob to adjust the symmetry of the waveform. We also can adjust the pitch of this individual oscillator up or down two octaves. We also have a detune knob, which is going to slightly detune the oscillator by sense. In the oscillator two section, we have the exact same controls. We have similar waveforms, the detune, the octave, and again, another pulse knob. Uh, this just gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of the way that you want it to sound. Down here, we have the oscillator tone, which is just more tone shaping um, capabilities. We have the oscillator mix, if it's all the way to the left, you're hearing 100% of oscillator one. If it's all the way to the right, you're hearing 100% of oscillator two. And right in the middle, you're hearing equal parts of both. We have a noise knob here, and this just controls an external white noise oscillator. So if you wanted to add a little bit of excitement and breath to your synth bass tone, you can do that. And the analog knob is just going to add a little bit of subtle detune and warmth. And if you are familiar with hardware-based synths, if you've heard of the term oscillator slop, it kind of functions in the same way and it's gonna give you just like a subtle detune across all of your oscillators. So you can use it. I don't suggest using it all the way because it can sound quite detuned, but adding just a little bit is perfect. All right, so that's the main section here. We're gonna move on to the filters. And just like we have two oscillators, we also have two filters. And the first one here, we can actually choose which type of filter we want. We have low pass filter, band pass filter, high pass filter, and this knob just controls the filter cutoff frequency. Now, if you'll notice down here in the bottom left, you can see that my mod wheel is moving when I move this knob. And that's because for every single patch within this template, our mod wheel is already pre-mapped and assigned to the filter cutoffs. So it's just really easy in a live performance setting to add a little bit of brightness and uh, energy to your sound um, just by simply moving your mod wheel. We also have a secondary filter here, which is just a low pass filter. And this is going to control the cutoff frequency of that. And these different numbers here, we have 12, 18, and 24. It just stands for the rate of attenuation for the filter itself. So a 12 dB per octave slope is going to yield a bit more brightness and 24 is going to be the harshest slope. So you're gonna cut off more steeply those, those high frequencies. 
We also have a filter blend knob. So similar to this oscillator mix, we can actually blend the sound of these two filters together, which is super cool. And it just adds to the, the sound design capabilities we have here with this template. We also have a resonance knob if you wanna add just a little bit of resonance and drive down here as well to give it a little bit more um, of that driven distorted sound. All right, next up is the envelope section. And here we have the classic filter envelope and the amp envelope. So you can really control the shape of your sound over time and the, you know, the timbre of your sound over time. Now down here we have the audio effects section. And this is great because some hardware synthesizers don't actually come shipped with audio effects built in. And so a lot of times people use pedals and you know there's just an added expense there. So we've actually created an audio effects section that you can use to shape your sound. We have compression, we have some saturation, a little bit of uh, high-end distortion, we also have fatness, which is just going to enhance the bottom end of your sound. We have chorus for some added warmth, and we also have reverb um, in case you wanted to sound a little bit more reverby. So that is it for the envelope section and the effects section. We're gonna move over to the modulation category. Now, these modulation categories feature two different LFOs. An LFO is basically stands for a low frequency oscillator. So it's a waveform that's so low to the point that we can't hear it. And what's happening is that we can actually attach specific effects and parameters to take on the shape of that, that waveform. So these shapes you see down here, we can actually change the way that the waveform is and we can attach um, pitch and filter amounts to those specific waveforms and we can oscillate them or move them at a specific speed according to the global tempo, which is down here in the bottom left. Super confusing, but I'll try and explain it by demonstrating. So we're gonna take uh, a bass note here. Let's try this one. All right, what's gonna happen is I'm going to up the filter mount here. And what this is going to do is that this LFO is going to modulate this filter, so it's going to open and close repeatedly according to this speed, so an eighth note, and according to this specific shape. So let's take a listen here. I'm gonna gradually build it in. So the filter is opening and closing really fast. If I were to change the, the wave shape here, And you can do the same for pitch. So you can modulate the pitch of the synth bass as well. So that's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, you have a pitch control and a filter control, and you can use the LFO to kind of modulate it and change it according to set speeds. And for synth bass, this isn't used too often. We do have a few patches in here that are loaded with LFOs uh, to get that wobble sound or you know to get a little bit of movement to the patch. But other than that, um, you can just use these at your own liberty. Feel free to experiment with it. You can. Um, add a little bit of pitch, you can add some filter brightness. Um, whatever you're looking for, you can do with this template. But just try to use the pitch one sparingly because as a synth bass player, you want your pitch to be steady and firm because you're the foundation of the band. So I wouldn't go adjusting the pitch um, too much. And the second LFO basically does the same thing. So you can change the rate of your LFO and as well as the shape. So you can actually combine both LFOs together to create some pretty cool sound. So let's try this. Why don't we do, we're gonna modulate the filter here. So we're gonna open and close the brightness of the filters. And we're gonna change the wave shape here and we're gonna uh, modulate the pitch. So here's two different LFOs going at the same time. Here it is with two filter LFOs. Now, 
Now let's go over to the mode section of the synth. And we, this is where we get to control the glide between our notes. And we can also control the voice mode for the synth itself. So if we have mono checked, basically the synth is going to limit um, your synth to spit out only one note at a time, okay? And every single time you hit a note, it's going to play the initial attack of the sound itself. If we were to click legato mode, it's again, it's going to spit out one note only, but it's going to skip the initial attack of the second note if you hold your notes down, okay? We have poly, and this, this mode it just stands for polyphony, and you can actually change the amount of voice um, polyphony up to 16 here. Um, but this is helpful in case you wanted to play some chords. Let's up the filter here just so we can hear it. So this is helpful in case you, maybe you just want to change it up a little bit. You don't want to play synth bass, but you have a really cool pad sound and you can play chords. And down here, we can actually control how many voices uh, the synthesizer can have. And this is often referred to as polyphony. So we can have 16 voice polyphony all the way down to one, which is the same thing as mono, okay? Um, but probably one of the most powerful sections or powerful buttons in this entire template is the unison button. And what the unison button does is that it stacks oscillators on top of each other and slightly detunes them. And so this basically provides you with this really thick and powerful and warm sound. And this is great for synth bass because that's what we want. We want a really thick low end uh, that has a lot of texture and, and clarity to it. So this unison mode is really powerful. And the way you can make your, your synth sound a lot more thick is by upping the voices here. So the more voices you add when unison mode is turned on, the thicker your sound will get. Okay, the less amount of voices that you have, the less thick that it will sound. Okay, so there's just a little tip for you, uh, but that is what unison mode does. And now we're gonna go over to our program section and this just allows us to control uh, global parameters like the patch changes. So we can go and we can scroll through our patches here. We can also initiate the arpeggiator. And this is just going to add some arpeggiated notes and it's gonna, I wrote the word repeater here because um, when you're playing a mono bass note and you're only playing one note, you can't arpeggiate because it's only one note. So it's just going to repeat the note over and over and over. And so we get this, this kind of repeater effect. Okay, now the gate stands for how long you want the notes to be. And down here, we can actually control the repeater rate. So how frequent or how fast are those repetitions? And we have our global tempo down here. So if you're playing, uh, maybe you're playing a song in your band and you wanna sync it to a click, you can do that as well. Down here, we have our pitch wheel. And the really cool thing about our template is that you can uh, control the pitch bend range. So right now it's set to 12. So every single time I play a note, um, let's change the patch here, get a different sound. Feedback bass, every single time I play a note and move my pitch wheel, it's going to move up or down an octave. And you can actually control this by clicking on the field and dragging down. So if you wanted, let's say a fifth up, here's what it would sound like. All right, so that's pretty much what the pitch parameter here does. And the little hat section we haven't talked about is just the output slider, which controls the volume of your synth. And that is it for our synth bass kit for main stage three. It is an extremely powerful synth. It's, uh, it's really fun to use and it just gives you everything that you need to achieve incredible synth bass tone. And it's all done by just having a MacBook with your MIDI controller. And that's the beauty of it. You don't have to worry about designing anything yourself. We have lots of different synth bass tones, 
already pre-mapped and pre-designed for you so that you don't actually have to worry about it. So if you have any more questions about this kit, feel free to message us on our website at worshipstart.com. But for now, I really hope you enjoy the kit and happy playing. <laughs>